That's to the writers of The Walking Dead for falsely making me believe that we finally, finally got rid of Lori. We'll get to that later. The second episode in season three of The Walking Dead is all prison. And I have to say I'm a little bit nervous because it, there's no secret that large structures in The Walking Dead breed complacency when it comes to the writers. The last major structure we came across was season two on Herschel's farm. And the writers of The Walking Dead drug that out like the opening act for a Lil Wayne concert while we wait for him to get into his zebra print skinny jeans. Suffice it to say, I think we're going to see a lot of this concrete jungle we call the prison. If you remember at the end of episode one, Herschel's leg gets cut off because he gets bitten by a walker. And then they realize that they're not the only people in the prison. I was kind of curious to see what they were going to do with this whole prisoner thing, especially considering how Rick has gone off Fidel Castro and with the rest of the group. The group of prison survivors look like a cell block D colors of Benetton ad. You got one guy who looks like the Sons of Anarchy, Reject. You got Ricky and Glacier's evil alter ego. And most importantly, we have three potential T-Dog replacements. A Red Tails Reject, a Green Mouth Body Double, and some other black guy who I can't come up with a fancy analogy for. There's nothing like good old competition to make an underachiever step his game up. And T-Dog definitely tries to step his game up in this episode. T-Dog must have popped an X-Pill or something because he's definitely feeling himself in this episode. I, I gotta be honest, I think I'm kind of liking this new T-Dog. He actually speaks without having been spoken to. He takes the initiative on certain things and he actually kills with some efficiency. After they drag Herschel and his leg back to the C block where the rest of the group is, the prisoners actually follow them and it becomes sort of a standoff. During this quasi-Mexican standoff, Daryl and Enrique Iglesias are going back and forth throwing racial slurs at each other. I have to say, there's nothing funnier than seeing a partially rehabilitated racist who still has no tact, i.e. Daryl. Oh, and for the record, I want to say thank you, T-Dog. Thank you, T-Dog, for not cocking your gun to the side when you entered this scene. Because I know you thought about it and I saw it in your face, but you decided to go against the stereotype. And for that, a slow clap for T-Dog. Man, they should have never gave Ricky and Glacier a 2.0 a handgun. I cannot stand this dude and I hate him with a passion. I knew this guy was going to be a problem the moment I saw that Spanish mullet. Rick, Daryl, and T-Dog all have guns. But for some reason, Enrique Iglesias 2.0 feels like he can whip his six-shooter around like he shoots lasers. I wish this guy would just take a hint. If everyone around you has a gun, and the gun that you have is at the lower end of the totem pole, you probably shouldn't act like a badass every two seconds. It's not the smartest thing to do. At this point, Rick and the gang start trying to explain to him what has happened. And the prisoners are so annoyingly oblivious to what has happened, that it just takes way longer than necessary for them to get the fact that everything is gone. And after it finally sets in, Rick and Enrique and Glacier start to have a pissing match about how they're going to divide up the prison and who lives where and who's not going to live where and so forth and so on. Even though he's a little messed up in the head, I kind of like this new Rick. He's decisive, intuitive, justifiably ruthless with a splash of compassion. So at this point, Rick and the gang and the rest of the prisoners decide that they'll split it up evenly. Rick and them will stay in Steve block and they'll help them clear out another half of the prison while they take half of their food as well. Now moving on, I have to say that I really hate when somebody gets bit, hurt, or sick in this series. Because what it does is it completely takes everything and grinds it to a halt while we sit and try to discover and explore everybody's feelings about the situation, which we honestly don't care about. Moving on, I have to say, I really hate when someone gets hurt, sick, or damaged somehow in this series. Because what it does is it takes everything, grinds it to a halt, and then we have to spend this extended period of time dealing with everyone's feelings and emotions about the situation. While Herschel flirts with death after having his leg cut off, everyone is concerned about Herschel wondering whether or not he's going to turn into a walker. And Maggie and her little sister, whose name I still don't care to learn, do that whole, oh my daddy might die thing. Oh, and also in this scene, Lori has a grandstanding moment of stating the obvious that she sucks as a mother, sucks as a wife, and really pretty much just sucks as a human being altogether. So going back to Rick and the gang and the prisoners, at this point they all gear up and get ready to storm the other cell blocks so they can get rid of the walkers in those cell blocks. And I found this scene to be a little ironically funny because now you have a situation where you have civilians teaching prisoners how to kill, basically. Again, Enrique Iglesias' evil incarnate is so damn annoying. When they give him a crowbar to help clear out the walkers, he holds up his piece of shit six-shooter and declares, Why do I need this when I got this? Well, Enrique Glacier, if they're able to show with the six walking dead, then you might have a point. All badass, no brain. Somebody please kill this dude. As Rick gives his killing zombies for dummy speech, the other prisoners are completely ignoring him, basically saying, We don't need you to tell us how to kill. And it's at this point that T-Dog has his moment. He has his moment to say something deep, meaningful, intriguing. And this is what he says. They ain't men. 
There's something else. And the award for stating the fucking obvious goes to... No shit, Sherlock. Men don't usually come back to life after you shank them a billion times in the stomach. After that, the scene cuts, and then we all find out that Maggie's going to hell. Why is Maggie going to hell, you say? Well, here's why. I don't care how much crying and sobbing you do, but telling your almost dead father to kill himself is hilariously fucked up. Back to the gang clearing the prison. Now, at this point, instead of holding rank and doing as Rick told them to do, the prisoners decide to do things their own way and go all durka durka and do everything but kill zombies. And at this point, Rick, T-Dog, and Daryl watch on in disgust as they watch the prisoners play zombie whack-a-mole. While all of this is going on, Carl decides to go all one-man army and starts to look for the infirmary. Carl looks up, finds the infirmary, and gets all the supplies they need to help Herschel and brings it back. At this point, Carl is really feeling himself because when he came back, he all but walked in, dropped the bag on the floor, and was like, BOSS! And of course, leave it to Lori to steal his shine. Carl comes back with everything that you need to help Herschel. And the first thing you decide to do is nag him about going off by himself into the prison. Chick, please, you've been losing Carl since season one. Don't start trying to play super mom now. I will say this. I do have a respect for Carl with respect to the fact that he went out and did what needed to be done. And I don't feel there was anything wrong with him telling his mom to get off of his back about it. Maybe if she would have stayed off of her, she wouldn't be pregnant. Just saying. So now, so now the prisoners get it together and they all start zombie killing. Well, except for the Green Mile body double. He gets scratched by a zombie. And Ricky Martin, reloaded, decides to channel his inner Hickok 45 and almost shoots Rick. At this point, I think Rick realizes he's going to have to off Ricky Martin because the last thing he needs is a Ricky Martin version of Daryl's older brother on his hands. After Big Tiny, aka the Green Mile Double, gets scratched by a zombie, Enrique Iglesias goes off fucking Hacksaw Jim Duggan and crushes his head in. Importantly, it's here where the group realizes who the real killer is. Sure, Rick has killed his fair share of people and probably Daryl too. And the prisoners that were there, they were actually just criminals, not really killers. But Enrique Iglesias is a different story. You see, Ricky Iglesias is an actual killer with no impulse control. And I think after he did that to Big Tiny, aka Green Mile Body Double, they realized exactly who they were dealing with. So now, when Daryl and the gang and the prisoners finally make it to the laundry room, this is where shit gets really real. But before I get into that, I gotta get something off my chest. What the hell is up with the Red Tails reject always looking like he's about to cry? I swear this dude must be in jail for something like statutory rape because this dude is a peon. At this point, I think T-Dog is really starting to feel good about himself because, well, one of his competitors are dead. The other one is a peon, so now he only has to deal with Tyler Perry. Yeah, I figured out a name for him. Anyway, Enrique opens the door and all the zombies come flooding in. At this point, Ricky Martin Reloaded decides this will be a prime opportunity to try to take out Rick, but he tries to do it in some underhanded, oh, I got caught in a moment type shit kind of way. And for the record, Enrique and Glacier, and Ricky Martin Reloaded are the same people. It's at this point that Rick is that look in his eyes. You know, when you're a good poor person to the core, but then somebody does something to you to make the devil come out of you, that's kind of the look that Rick had on his face. This was by far one of my favorite parts in this episode because I wanted to regain Glacier's death from the word go. And well, Rick ain't really the same Rick we knew from season one. He kills people when they fuck with him. And well, machete to the head, now you know he did. As soon as Rick killed Enrique Iglesias 2.0, Rick tells Reject tries to charge Rick, but then decides otherwise and bolts through the door and takes off running. At this point, T-Dog and Daryl have the Son of Anarchy Reject and Tyler Perry at bow and knife point, I guess. It's in the scene where Rick tries to figure out what he's going to do with the Sons of Anarchy Reject and Tyler Perry that I start to actually like the Sons of Anarchy Reject because he turns into a prospect real quick when he realizes he's about to die, and I think it's fucking hilarious. He's all crying and yelling and screaming about how he doesn't want to die and how he's nothing like them. But mad props to Tyler Perry for not begging for his life. Rick decides not to kill them, but instead keep up to his end of the bargain and put them in a part of the jail cell that will be their own area. Cut scene and now we're back to Herschel and his leg. Now this scene is supposed to be the scene where all our dreams and fantasies come true. We've been waiting for this since season one when Lori was getting banged out by Shane. Then we really wanted her dead when she talked Rick into killing Shane. And we almost get it in season two when she gets jumped by the zombies after the car accident. But it didn't happen. But no, this is our time. This is our moment for Lori to go, bye bye. But no, the writers want to play with our emotions and keep Lori alive. Don't get me wrong, I like Herschel, but I would just as easily trade his life if that meant that Lori would go to. I mean it. I'm serious. Killer. 
So Herschel stops breathing and Laurie starts doing mouth to mouth to Herschel to get him to start breathing again. It's at this point the music cues in and everyone's nervous because we all feel it. We know what's coming. Herschel's going to turn into a walker and bite her face off. And to a degree, he kind of does. Well, no, he doesn't actually. He actually jumps up and grabs her. While this is going on and Herschel jumps up and everybody's in this tense moment and everybody's like, oh no, what's happening? Carl's standing at the end of the, at the end of the entrance with his gun drawn and ready to shoot. The only problem is he's doing that same stupid grip where he grips the gun and has two fingers and a trigger guard. It drives me insane. Why has no one showed this brat how to shoot? You can kill zombies all day long, but you can't show Justin Bieber's cousin how to shoot a gun properly? So after Rick, Darrow, and T-Dog lock Alex Cross and Son of Anarchy Reject and they're part of the prison, T-Dog feels it's his time to drop another jewel of You Don't Say. As they're leaving, T-Dog appears from the shadows behind the bars and says, Word of advice, I take those bodies and I burn them. <laughs> T-Dog is such a hoe. <laughs> Cut scene and now we're back with Herschel. Herschel's doing much better now, even though he only has one leg. Granted, walk towards the light, Maggie is feeling like shit because now the father that she just told to kill himself is now doing much better. And now Lori gets to feel like a hero because she saved Herschel's life. I still want her gone. And I'm not even going to talk about the nasty shit that Carol's doing with some of the zombies out in the yard. But the last scene of the show where Lori and Rick kind of do this verbal patting each other on the back about the day's events was a little interesting. So after they get through verbally patting each other on the back about the day's event, Lori tries to say the subject and talk about them as being husband and wife. <laughs> and Rick kind of hits her with the jump off shoulder squeeze. You know what I'm talking about. That shoulder squeeze or that shoulder tap that you give that girl you're just sleeping with after she asks you whether or not you love her. Kind of like, oh, oh, poor dumb child. Don't you know any better? I'm surprised they didn't hit her with the Stevie J face. It's pretty obvious that Rick still loves his wife. He's just disgusted with her at the moment. And then from there, end episode two, season three of The Walking Dead. All right, folks.